What up? It's your boy, Angela Floor, the lazy writer, and this is our eighth installment of Read to Succeed. Um, it's a series where we try to read every day. Now, I might not make a video about these stories every day, but I am reading every day. It just sometimes takes me a couple of days to finish it. I'm trying to keep busy, and as always, I'm lazy. Now, we read and Glaviano's Come On Silver. And I really liked it. As always, I'm going to just do a quick overview of the story. I'm going to talk about what my experience was as a reader and as a writer, what I can learn from this author. So the story just revolves around this girl named Josephine. She prefers to go by Finn, who is attending the summer camp for the purpose of learning what it means to be a woman. And at first, so it starts out all the all of the letters are na- are titled Dear Future Husband, with the exception of one, which is Dear Future Husband, um, and then in parentheses, Andrew, question mark, because there's a character named Andrew who is this kind of possibly rapist kind of character, right? And that's, and my name's Andrew, so it was really uncomfortable, but it's dear, it's, it's written as Dear Future Husband from the perspective of a girl who at the very least has hit in puberty because she's in a summer camp in which the requirement to be there is to be a girl and to have your period. So, or have had your period. So that's really an interesting setup. And at first, you know, there are hints of this whole world because it's only told in letters and through her kind of naive experience, right? So parts of this world sound super crazy cultish. Like there's this weird saying that they have to say every, like I think three times a day, it's kind of like the camp motto. And I think it's in Latin. I don't, I don't know what it means. I didn't Google translate it. I didn't feel like doing that, but I suggest if you, if you want to Google translate it, you can put in the comments what the meaning of it is. It might not be Latin though. Maybe it's Italian, but it's very cultish and they take them away sometimes. And, and there's like a, it's, it's a very weird situation. She's at the summer camp that is really strict and her counselor has suggested her to start or has required her to start writing letters to her quote unquote future husband. Um, and it's a weird experience to read because she's writing to her future husband and you're reading it as kind of the receiver of those letters. Therefore, you, I, I'm a guy, I'm not a female. So it's, I start feeling like I'm this, I'm the guy, like, okay, I'm her future husband. Or I start, I, I try to put myself in that mindset. It's like, okay, I'm receiving these letters from my future wife, I guess. And the weird part about it is, is it's kind of a weird world in a way. And there's a lot of sketchy things about the way they treat these girls and kind of the way they're preparing these girls for the world that feels just wrong and iffy. And being the recipient of these letters as the quote unquote future husband, I felt bad. Like I'm complicit in this. Like, oh, I'm the future husband. I'm letting this happen. Like it's, it's a really weird story. But as it goes on, I start going back and forth on whether or not this is a weird cultish summer camp or it's just a weird summer camp. I don't know. But I, it it continues and there's, there's a central character named Andrew kind of that it that a lot of her experience at summer camp revolves around who she clearly has some sort of sexual understanding of him as a man. Well, he's like a senior in high school or something, which is why earlier I think I called him like a pseudo rapist because I think he's technically under 18 too, but I, there seems to be a situation that he really pressured her into um, and he's under 18. So whatever you want to call that, it's what it is. And he refers to her, him as looking like a Ken doll, which is the whole reason that she's at the camp. Her grandmother saw her playing with Barbie dolls in a way that seemed sexually explicit. So the grandmother decided she must be sent to this camp to learn what it means to be a woman. And then she relates this Andrew character who's the horse trainer or something like that. He's in charge of the horses, um, which she's entirely fascinated by, which is no, is another thing that becomes an image that's brought up a lot. So she's obsessed with horses and the keeper of horses, Andrew is the one she becomes into. So, you know, you're kind of seeing where that's going. And so, yeah, this, she looked at the Barbie dolls and had the kind of a sexual awareness through the Barbie dolls. And then he looks like a Barbie doll, right? A Ken doll. So that relationship kind of continues to the point where she starts to kind of have more and more of an interest in him. And he's creepy and tries to meet with her multiple times. And then eventually they do meet and, they go on a horse ride that is 
really, really, really obviously, in my opinion, a metaphor for a sexual interaction, right? But I can't tell whether or not it's supposed to stay as a metaphor for sexual interaction or we're supposed to say it was sexual interaction, right? Because it was all through letters um, and it describes the horse ride, how a young girl might describe her for her first uh, sexual experience, except everything is switched with her going on a horse ride. So I thought that was really cool, that, the way that she did that as a writer. And then eventually she ends up having to do this weird swim across the lake to prove her it's it's crazy so her I, you know what? i'm not even gonna get into the story you read it it any more than that it, it's a, it's a pretty weird story it continues and it's just a creepy 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 summer camp with a creepy guy and has something to do with sexual awakening that's what that story is now as a reader, I really loved it. It was probably the most compelling story for me so far. And I think because of the letter to, like, the, it was a letter to, addressed essentially to the reader, right? Dear future husband, dear future husband. And the voice is really good. Although I have a problem with the voice of the main character because it's first person, right? It's from the perspective of the girl Josephine, who prefers the name Finn. But it's from her perspective, meaning the voice of it should sound like a girl who has recently hit puberty. However, sometimes it kind of bleeds into a more literary voice, the more literary voice of what I would imagine the author to be. A little too self-aware of itself being uh, that it's going to be, like, as if it's a writer. You know what I mean? It doesn't always sound like a little girl is writing this. It often sounds like the author is writing this. So that kind of took me out of it because sometimes the the, she would say some stuff that I'm just like, that is way too advanced <laughs> for, for me. You know what I mean? Nonetheless, a ch like essentially a child. But it was still really, really good. And, and the voice compelled me and the mystery got me because I didn't, I just want, I just wanted to know what was up with this camp. You never get into that. I, I felt like the camp was slaughtering goats, you know, <laughs> like something secret in the back, you know? Um, but you never learn that. But that's fine. I still think it was a wonderful story. And as a writer, one thing that I, the thing that I probably take most away from this as a writer is I really like that image of the horse being for sexual intercourse. And I think that making it so, it was so blatant, like it wasn't even close. Like it, it was not subtle. Like the horse ride was described exactly like a sexual experience. And it was so obvious and so, so blatant that I think I often think that metaphors need to be really subtle. Right. But this was just like trot, trotted all over it like a horse, right? Like stomped all over that idea and just made it so blatant, almost like shockingly. So I was like, oh, gosh, this is kind of took me out of it. I was like, what? She's really doing this, like <laughs> making the horse ride that obviously a sexual experience, um, but never literally making it a sexual experience. Right. It's a metaphor. But I tend to think that that was a sexual experience and that the, the, you know, the girl who's not real person wrote it in her letters as a horse ride but I don't know maybe that's not true but either way or it never really clarifies whether or not the horse ride was just her kind of coping mechanism with the sexual intercourse essentially rape or it was an actual horse ride that was also actually a metaphor for sexual intercourse I thought that was cool just how blatantly and obvious and just with no like grace it just she just did it like very blatantly but really well because her level of language is really strong that her command of language is strong so she was able to do it really well i really liked that part of the story as a writer and i think that i'm gonna try to steal something like that one day who knows but probably not with a horse and probably not with sexual intercourse <laughs> so that, either way but i thought and back to the horse really quick i like the horse thing because i feel like the horse is a good like it's an obvious thing that a, a, a young girl will be obsessed with so it's a good a person who's in charge of the horse kind of has power over the horse power over like a girlish interest is the one who ends up getting her like attention and and kind of taking advantage of her. I, I don't know. It just was a really well put out story and just just period enjoy it. Like it was just easy to read being the end. It was an easy read and it was good. So that is my thoughts on. Come on, silver by Anne, whatever her name is, Gabalakarabaf. Anne, is it Anne? It might not be Anne. Gosh, this book is, just keep going. Anne Glaviano. 
Well, I hope everyone, well, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Okay. And that's it. Angel for the lazy writer. Dunskies.